Mr. Revolver Guy back in the reloading layer with the Cimarron Bad Boy 44 Magnum. A classic design with modern features. Welcome range fans. Mr. Revolver Guy here with DayAtTheRange.com. This bad boy is the brainchild of Cimarron president, Mr. Mike Harvey. The old school classic design is based on the 1860 army style grip frame. For guys like myself with big old meat hooks, that means nothing may feel better in the big palms than an 1860 style grip frame. Notice I have all three fingers on that grip frame comfortably, not squeezed in there. I mean, just really comfortably. Maybe nothing better, possibly even feels better than a 1911 in my hands. Of course, that's my hands. Other classic features include eight inch octagonal barrel that's one in 20 twist with an 11 degree forcing cone. There's a six shot cylinder. It's non-fluted and features countersunk chambers, folks. For us reloaders, the cylinders is 1.68 inches in length, which accommodate longer loads than Sammy spec. That spec being 1.610 inches in length. I personally would load anything longer than 1.665 to avoid possible crimp jump issues that you may exhibit while firing off or touching off one of these bad boy 44 Magnums has nothing to do with the revolver, has everything to do about the round, whether factory or reloaded. If not crimped properly, you could have a bullet creep out and lock up the cylinder in and of itself. Sometimes a little bit easier to solve in a single action because of the way you can remove that cylinder. Anyways, let's move on to some of the modern features. Modern features include a front sight blade that is absolutely beautiful. And by the way, I skipped over, totally skipped over, just the finish, the fit and finish on this revolver and this deep bluing where literally I can see my hat as a reflection in this bluing is absolutely gorgeous, folks. But anyways, back to the front sight blade. This front sight blade is also notched into the barrel. Not only is it notched into the barrel for security's sake, there's a screw also holding this front sight notch into this barrel for recoil purposes of this big 44 Magnum. Then you move on to the back of the frame and at the back of the frame, you have an adjustable rear sight. That rear sight is adjustable for windage as we would expect and also for elevation. Now, there's a secret about the bad boy that I'm getting ready to reveal, folks. That secret is most of us that have shot single action pistols before know the loading sequence looks like this. Half cock, open up the sight gate and load one round, skip an empty chamber and load four more. Then after loading that four, you're gonna pull the trigger all the way to the rear and let the hammer down on that empty chamber. Now, back in the old west days, we did this or people did this to keep, you see this hammer? This hammer here, and I'll get you some B-roll footage, has the firing pin mounted on it, but that's one of the geniuses of Mr. Harvey. That's one of the tricks about this single action army that makes it so much more different than your grandfather's single action army. And that is when you let this hammer down on a live round and you keep your finger on that trigger, the hammer and the firing pin is going to expose itself through the frame, touching off the primer, making that big 44 Magnum bore go down range. When you let off this trigger, folks, that hammer or the firing pin in and of itself retracts inside of the hammer. That makes it safe to carry this 
single action with six rounds loaded. How they did this with modern pistols would be include, there's a number of different names and nomenclatures out there, but transfer bar safety, transfer bar, um, those two are most well known. If you look at some of your revolvers today, that transfer bar is there to allow you to carry six rounds in the chamber and keep the firing pin from smashing. It makes it drop, drop safe. Okay. Well, Mr. Harvey, his ingenuity and his genius came up with the proper safety mechanism for the single action army. And what a beautiful thing it is. So now folks, this is going to be part one. This is part one of the Cimarron bad boy. There'll be two parts to this video. Part one, we're going to head out to the range with the way this forcing cone is cut and also the chambers being sized, which I have measured with pin gauges, the chambers are sized exactly, exactly at 0.4, three thousandths of an inch. 4.30, that's what we want for 44 Magnum. This thing should be hella accurate on the range. And we're gonna take it out and put some of my 260 grain, four blue coated bullets across the chronograph and on target to see how the Cimarron bad boy does on its first outing on the range. Walk with me, folks. From the reloading layer to the pistol range with the Cimarron, bad boy, 44 Magnum, eight inch barrel. I gave you a little bit of a tabletop previously in the reloading layer, guys, I apologize, it's dark out or getting dark out. I hope the chronograph gets the readings down range and the accuracy on camera down range, but we're gonna put six rounds. The magic, the secret to the Cimarron bad boy, six rounds you can load in this thing. Down range and on target, hopefully before the rain comes in. So let's cut to the chase, get started, but you're gonna to wanna to join me back in the reloading layer because I've got something additional to share with you. Let's get these rounds on target. Woo, hard hitter, 260 grains. Second round on target. Third round on target. Fourth round on target. Fifth round on target. Hold on for dear life. Sixth round on target. About 1170 feet per second. Let's see if we can get another six rounds down on target in a different group on the chronograph. Be right back. Take a look at the target, folks. Not bad. For 10 yards, first time out. We're gonna go for six more. All right, I got six more rounds loaded up in the bad boy. We got to beat the rain, folks. That single action recoil is hard to beat. Big 44 Magnum is like nothing the way it rolls in the hand. Okay, well maybe I didn't count all my six rounds, but there you have it. I think it's about an average of about 1150 to maybe 1170 feet per second. We'll get back to the reloading layer and show you the chronograph results 
and some other plans that I have for the Cimarron Bad Boy 44 Magnum. All right, there it is, folks. That's 12 rounds from the Cimarron Bad Boy. Those last six all fired with one hand. Let's get this expensive camera gear and my chronograph out of the rain and back to the reloading layer. Woo! Back in the reloading layer. So how did the old Cimarron Bad Boy 44 Magnum perform out on the range today? You saw me shoot through the chronograph. You saw what kind of accuracy I got through it. Folks, those were the first 12 rounds. I went on to fire an additional 80 some odd rounds. So we put about 100 rounds through the revolver today with no hiccup at all. And as you can see, it is in fine shape. A little dirty, but in great shape. By the way, those chronograph numbers on the first six shots rang out to be a high of 1,179 feet per second with a low of 1,111 feet per second with an average of 1,149, extreme spread of 68, and a standard deviation of 24. Then we rolled over to another six shots that I fired with the old one-handed hold. And those numbers turned out to be 1185 for the highest, 1149 for the low, 1174 for the average, 36 for extreme spread, and 12 for standard deviation. The accuracy in the target stands for itself or speaks for itself at 10 yards. But most importantly, folks, what do I have planned and up my sleeve for episode number two. There might even be an episode number three at some distance. I think that's the only way to test it, right? Maybe at distance for handgun hunting. Yeah, maybe we should do that. I think we will. But let me show you a little something of what I got planned for episode number two. And up next, Range fans, on episode two, we're going to test the Cimarron Bad Boy 44 Magnum through some clear ballistics gelatin with a number of 44 Magnum Freedom Pills. And starting off to the left there, we're going to start out with the Hornady 180 grain XTP hollow point. Then we're going to move on to the 200 grain XTP hollow point. And then for that self-defense purpose, because this single action revolver, folks, to me, fits the bill of personal protection, personal woods protection, and also hunting pistol. We're going to test for personal protection through the clear ballistics gelatin spear gold dot 44 Remington Magnum at 210 grains. And today you saw me test the Ford Blue 260 grain across the chronograph. We're going to shove a couple of those in the clear ballistics gelatin as well, just to see how much penetration it would get if we were to use it as a hunting round. And there by Staff Sergeant Chesty is the 245 round 44 Magnum Keith Slug. We'll pump those in the clear ballistics gelatin as well. We'll test out the Sierra 210 grain, 44 Magnum for personal self-defense, may even load it at Magnum loads as well as 44 special loads. And then we'll finish up the day with some Hornady XTP 240 grain through some clear ballistics gelatin. I told you folks, you're not going to want to miss Bad Boy Cimarron episode part two. Mr. Revolver Guy, signing out.